In this lesson, we'll take a quick look at uh, the hair particles within the particle emitting system and how you can put it to use for various applications. And we'll, uh, I'll give you a little explanation about color for those of you who've never had an art class with color before. So this is, uh, here's my particle system setting up here. Let's see, I have quite a few particles in here, 10,000 particles in here. And notice the setting is just, the only difference in the setting, instead of being emitter, it's set as hair like this and that's how I was able to generate them but imagine this is being say a patch of grass green grass though instead of this red grass like that well if you were drawing grass say on a canvas you wouldn't just draw it as green it turns out that uh, green grass isn't really all just green there's all kinds of colors within the grass in fact you, you can experiment painting something and put a little bit of red in there and a little blue a little green a little yellow all different kinds of little colors and suddenly your grass will really start coming to life but scenes aren't strictly you know green for grass and blue for the sky well that's the way I used to paint them years ago <laughs> and if you see some of my original paintings they're really bad so in this case though what we're going to do is uh, we'll in fact I'll render this real quick because it takes a little bit of time to render it with 10,000 particles and oh I should have put a color in the scene back there but this kind of give you an idea so what I have in here for this particular well whatever it is hair or grass whatever it's just an example is I have a range of colors or a ramp of colors and I have lighter colors up here at the top generally and then down here at the base where there's less, less light, I actually have some uh, blues. I usually put blues and purples. Purples make really good shadow colors. I've learned this from painting or painting with acrylics over the years. And so purples at the base and, you know, colder colors versus like a warmer color, reds and reds and oranges are warmer, but co colder colors, the blues and the purples make really nice shadows. And so in order to do this particular image like this, I put some colder colors down here in fact if we take a look at the settings up here in the material I have set this here there's the normal color but I clicked the ramp button and added colors in here and the way you do this is just by in fact I'll just change it I'll just let's uh which one's active let's see it's this guy's active yeah that guy's active here with the dotted line I'll just delete it like that and if I want to put a new one in I just add it and you see he's the dotted line right there I can just pull it over to here and then I click here and I go change it to the color this time I'll use a darker purple in fact I'm just gonna okay, use like a bluish purple and I'll drop that down like that <coughs> and then I've changed the color so and then you can change the variation like this with the sliders there's the yellow color up by here I had this sometimes I'll put in uh, like up here towards this top end, I'll move this over here and I might add a bluish color like that for the sky because the sky reflects color onto the objects in the scene so you have to have some blues in your scene as well so um, and usually as things go vertically they get lighter in color and as they go further into the distance they get bluer in color and as they come into the foreground they get more red and more orange in color. I might do a lesson on that in particular. So maybe I'll just do a maybe I'll break out the canvas and just do a paint lesson someday. And and that can really help you build your scene because when you add lights into your scene um, and the surface, the lighting can make a huge difference.